All right, welcome back. Last video, we took a look at Namekeeper, which we showed you a little introduction to ArrayList and the five, six basic methods that the ArrayList has to make your list management super easy and painless. But we had mentioned that this was also an option. And while you may not do this in your code in the near future, we just want to point out uh, this aspect of ArrayList. You'll see here, Big difference in the way that I declared the array list in this class, Namekeeper 2. What I've done is I have not specified the type of object that I'm storing in the list. And so here I've just said array list names. Now, what happens when you do this? It doesn't know I'm going to be storing strings. Maybe I'm going to be storing students. Maybe I'm going to be storing random objects. Maybe I'm going to be storing movies. It doesn't know. So you end up having to do a little bit of extra work. But before I show you what that tiny bit of extra work is, just want to show you one quick idea, which is a little early for us, but we're going to be getting to soon. We haven't told you yet, but when you make classes of your own, so class student, uh, a, use a class that's already been made by somebody, class graphics, class random, anytime a class is made in Java, you are building upon a class it's like the mother of all classes, and this class is called Object. So literally, they called it Object with a capital O. The Object class is like the, the head, top of the chart class, and when you make one, basically your object gets all the code that is in the Object class. Now, there's not tons of code in there, but there is some code in there. So in a way, what we'll eventually learn is your student is an object. A random object is an object object. A graphics object is an object. Okay, they're all objects. Every class you make is an object. Now, because of this relationship, the people that made ArrayList said, well, what is my ArrayList going to store? And they said, well, you know what? Since every single class made is coming from the object class, ultimately, Let's make our class store object. So inside of the ArrayList class, what you really have is you have an array of type object. And when you do the array of type object, the nice thing is this. You can actually put any class in there. And that's what you end up doing with ArrayList, right? People use ArrayList to store lots of different types in the ArrayList. Now, usually they do this, and they tell you what they're doing. Hey, I'm going to store strings. I'm going to store books. I'm going to make it a list of students. But when you don't say what it is, the compiler or the ArrayList just sort of has to assume you're storing object objects, so instances of the object class. And you know what? When I put a string in there, a string comes from the object class. So if this was string, string comes from the object class, it counts as an object, and it's allowed in the list. And we'll learn about that more later on. But the neat thing here is, is you can add these things in, just like you did before, so there's no penalty yet. But the penalty comes when you try to take the things out of the list. So you'll see here when I cycle through the list, what I have to do. When I say names.getk, it's going to that slot, and it's yanking the object out. It doesn't know technically that it's a string. What it knows is, is it assumes it's an object. Now you're going to see here, I cast it into a string. So I pulled it out. I know that it's a string, but technically the program thinks it's only an object. It doesn't know it's actually a string. So I cast it into a string to be able to say, hey, string temp, set yourself equal to a and you got to cast that to a string. So now it's technically a string, and you see here everything works, and this will run nicely. If you didn't cast it into a string, you're probably getting familiar enough with the errors now that you guess what this is going to say, but it's going to basically say incompatible types. Requires a string because I have string temp. It wants a string, but it says found object. It's considering this code ArrayList, getting k and the array list hasn't specified a type 
So the best it can do is say, well, I know it's an object. It doesn't know it's a string or a book or a student. So that's why you have to put the casting out when you do this. Now you may say, well, why in the world would you ever want to do that? It's possible that your array list, you would like to keep tons of different types in there. And so you don't want to say array list a string or array list a student. Maybe you're going to have a whole grab bag of stuff in there. I mean, it's one reason. And then as you pull it out, there are ways to check or ways for you to keep track of what it is that you're trying to get out. Because you'll sort of notice here, one of my classes in here is called movie. In the project here, I do have a movie class. This doesn't work. Well, it'll look like it works. No errors, right? Hey, movie temp, set yourself equal to, get that thing out and turn it into a movie. But watch what happens when I run this. When I run Keeper 2, that's not a movie there in memory, is it? We know it's a string that I put in, and so what ends up happening is we get the red lines of death. Class cast exception. Cannot be cast. It knows it's a string. It cannot be cast into a movie. And so it's not like you just get to decide on the whim what you want to turn it into. That thing was a string in there. It will eventually find out when you run your program. So this is just a little thing of array lists that you should be aware about, about the types there. They're not absolutely required, but it's a good idea for beginners. Name your types, and then you don't have to bother with the casting or keeping track of what you have in the list. And that's that one. Thanks for watching.